Okay. So, what we is what we did in the last class clear to everybody? Can everybody take a t test of regression coefficients and interpret that t test in a multiple linear regression framework? Can you? Sure. Do you want me to go over that again? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. Fine. You're not there. That's not an excuse. <laughs> right? See, remember. Okay, I'll do it quickly for the multiple linear regression. Okay, I'll not do it for the single linear, you know, there's a two variable model, but I'll do it for the multiple linear regression model because that is what is going to be the more relevant thing for you. Right? Okay. Now we know, I'm going to do, go over it entirely again. Okay, so please make sure that you do this well because at the very least, at the end of this course, I want you to be able to run a linear regression properly and interpret the coefficients. There are a lot more topics that we need to cover, but even if we do that at the very basic, you know, that's sufficient, I mean, that's, that will be some achievement. Okay, fine. So, so we know that in a multiple linear regression context, beta hat is, what is the formula for beta hat? x dash x inverse x dash y, okay? This is x dash x beta plus e. Everybody understands this formulation? y is equal to x beta plus e, kind of a multiple linear regression formulation. I'm sure everybody understands that, right? Okay, sure. So x dash x inverse x dash x beta plus e. This becomes yeah. Where now what is x dash x inverse into x dash x? What is a inverse into a? Identity. The identity matrix, right? So this therefore will be simply the matrix I. Yeah? So beta hat is I beta plus x dash x inverse x dash E. In the rest of the lecture, I will not write I specifically. Now we also know, we have seen so far that if, if, if expectation of, if expectation x dash E is equal to 0, then it can be shown that expectation, this implies this, right? Expectation beta hat is equal to beta. Everybody knows how to show that? Yeah? Right? Expectation beta hat is equal to beta. So we'll make this assumption. We'll make this assumption and we will argue that expectation beta hat is equal to beta so I will replace this beta by expectation beta hat, okay? Now I am interested in the variance of beta hat. I am interested in the variance of beta hat. In general, what is beta hat? Beta hat, this beta hat, right? Alpha hat beta hat, so it's a 2 cross 1 matrix. We know that for a single linear vari single variable case, variance of x, for example, is expectation of x minus expectation x square. This is the variance of x for a single, for a, for a scalar x, a single variable. Okay. Now, we want to think of this in terms of a matrix, right? So what we really want is, we are interested in finding, so think of alpha hat minus alpha, beta hat minus beta, right? What is this? This is nothing but beta hat minus beta will be this, because beta hat is the large matrix. Right? This is, of course, the individual beta, the coefficient of x. What I have done is I have written the large beta matrix as alpha and beta. 
right? So please remember there is a difference here, right? Okay, beta hat minus beta can be written as alpha hat minus alpha into beta hat minus beta. Abhi, if we want the variance, if we want the variance of this matrix, then I must square this matrix and take expectations. How do I square a matrix? To square a matrix, I'll have to multiply it by its transpose. Yeah? Sure? Right? Because when you multiply matrix with its transpose, you get all the cross elements also. X into X transpose will be X1 square, X1, X2, X1, X3, X2, X1, X2 square, X2, X3, etc. So we are interested in this. This. This quantity is what we are interested in. Right? But what is this quantity? This quantity is beta minus beta hat into beta minus beta hat transpose. Right? Sorry. Beta hat minus beta transpose. You're right. Actually won't matter, but let's 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 stick to that. Beta hat minus beta, beta hat minus beta transpose. Right? Now, so, but what is beta hat minus beta? Beta hat minus beta is beta hat minus, sorry. Beta hat minus beta is x dash x inverse x dash e, right? So, so from which it follows that beta hat minus beta into beta hat minus beta transpose is x dash x inverse x dash e into transpose, right, okay, right. So what is that quantity? So this quantity now will be, because you know that A, B, C transpose is what? C transpose, B transpose, A transpose, right. So this can be written as x dash e into e transpose, x transpose ka transpose will be x and because remember x dash x inverse is a symmetric matrix. So if you transpose it, you get the same matrix back. Because the symmetric matrix has the same elements above the principal diagonal. So if you interchange them, nothing really happens. Right? Okay. So now, but this can be written as, so but this quantity is what? Okay. This quantity is now x dash x inverse, x dash e, e dash, x, x dash x inverse. Right? Okay? Now, I want the expectation of this. Right? So, I must take the expectation of... So, I must take the expectation of x dash x inverse x dash e, e dash x, x, x dash x inverse, right? Now these are all constants. In our simplifying assumption, these are all constants. We are assuming they are fixed from sample to sample. So this quantity then becomes, 
So what I really have here is x dash x inverse x dash expectation e a dash x x dash x inverse right this is what I am left with okay because, the expect, because all the x's will come out of the expected value because they are all constants right sure okay now let us understand what is e e transpose because think of e being so I am interested in now the matrix e e e dash e right expectation of e e dash okay now let us think of e as say e1 e2 e3 e4 this e okay so e into e transpose will be e1 e2 e3 e4 into e1 e2 e3 e4 right which is what which is what will that be e1 square even e2 e4 right you have e2 e1 e2 square e2 e3 e2 e4 e3 even e3 e2 e3 square and e3 e4 and finally e4 e1 e4 e2 e4 e3 e4 square right now i am interested in the expected value of this whole quantity i am interested in the expected value of this entire quantity the expected value of a matrix is nothing but the matrix of the expected value of each individual element. The expected value of a whole matrix is nothing but the matrix of the expected values of each individual element. So, this matrix will then now be, so the important thing that we have here now is, so this will be, this matrix will now be this matrix will now be expected value of e1 square expected value of e1 e2 expected value of e1 e3 expected value of e1 e4 right expected value of e2 e1 e2 square e2 e3 e2 e4 expected value of e3 e1 e3 e2 e3 square expected of e4 e1 e4 e2 yeah right now what is expected value of e1 square variance of e1 right so we'll call it sigma 1 square so I will call this as sigma 1 square right this is the covariance between e1 and e2 this is the covariance between e1 and e3 
the difference is between the, the, the difference between these two is this is the covariance between e1 and its immediately next term this is the covariance between e1 and term two periods apart we'll call this gamma 1 we'll call this gamma 2 and similarly we'll call this gamma 3 right so let me this wipe this off so this becomes gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 right similarly this is covariance between e2 and e1 so covariance between two terms of e just one period apart this will also be gamma 1 right this will be sigma 2 square what will this be gamma 1 and this will be gamma 2 right this will be gamma 2 yeah this will be gamma 1 yeah sigma 3 square sorry what am i doing sigma 3 square and gamma 1 because they are one period apart this will be gamma 3 this will be yeah now you see an important thing this is called the variance covariance matrix for e the variance covariance matrix for e why is it called the variance covariance matrix for e because it tells you what are the covariances of the various e's right we will in general call this matrix omega that generally this matrix will be omega you see that omega is a symmetric matrix you see that omega is a symmetric matrix because if you take the principal diagonal right if you take the principal diagonals the terms below the principal diagonal terms below above the principal diagonal are arranged in a symmetric fashion 1 3 is the same as 3 1 right so it's a symmetric matrix like that you can check for all terms and you see it's a symmetric matrix now the problem is the problem is if you have sigma 1 square sigma 2 square sigma 3 square sigma 4 square are all unknown terms